Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Webinar Update with myself, David Madden, here at CMC Markets. Today's date is Monday the 12th of March 2018 and the time has just gone 12.15 GMT, quarter past 12 p.m. UK time. Uh, as always with our webinars, what I'm going to do is leave the risk warning slides up on screen for you guys to have a quick read through. Uh, it's very straightforward. It essentially states anything that is covered in today's webinar is merely my own, my own thoughts, comments, views and opinions. It, isn't, it should not be taken as explicit trading or investment advice. Um, for those of you who regularly listen in to our webinar or watch the, uh, the replay video, you will, you, you will know that this is, a, this is a very much common practice here at CMC Markets. So while you're having a quick read through what's going on on the screen in front of you in relation to the risk, risk uh, warnings uh, slides, I'll just quickly talk, talk about what's going on in the financial markets over the last few days. And the short answer is not a whole lot. It's been a relatively quiet uh, start of the trading week. Positive finish that we had on, in, 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 in the US on Friday was replicated by a positive finish last night overnight in Asia. And we're seeing, and we're seeing uh, the mood of optimism continuing here in Europe. Granted, it isn't um, as bullish as it is, say, uh, in, in the United States, but it is, it is doing fairly well. It's, it's holding up. Um, the, the financial markets, for the time being at least, have seemed to shrugged off the news uh, that the Mr. Trump is pressing ahead with his tariffs on steel and aluminium, uh, granted with the exception of countries such as, such as uh, Canada and Mexico and also Australia. And also, those tariffs don't actually come into play uh, for another 10 days or so. So there's a possibility the financial markets may wait to react until then, but for the time being, things look quite, things look, or things are looking to be kind of carrying on business as usual. This could also be a case of the financial markets initially had the had a, an excessive reaction to the news of the tariffs, and then as we found out, Mexico, Canada, and Australia were exempt, and they weren't really imposed uh, just yet. So maybe it's a case of the financial markets re kind of reacted and priced in the bad news initially before we actually had um and then it turned out it was a slightly watered down um um of, uh, approach to the protectionist policies that, that has gone down the route of also we haven't really had a full-on and equal uh reply from say the european union or china or what have in terms of reciprocal tariff sizes so there's a possibility if we see a reaction from say Europe or the European or, see, from the European Union or say perhaps China, we could be heading down the route then of a trade war, and that that is something that which is likely to push away on U.S. U.S. stock markets and global stock markets and also the U.S. dollar. Uh, looking back at, at last week's non-farm payroll figures, it was it was it was typical non-farm payrolls in that the market reacted to the headline number, but. The devil's in the detail with non-farm payrolls, and actually the remainder of the report was good. It was good, but it, was, but it wasn't amazing. It wasn't as it wasn't as impressive as the headline number. Um, wage growth was good, but it cooled, and also it missed expectations. Uh, and that is that is an area which, uh, which which traders kind of are now kind of second thinking: Are there going to be four rate hikes from the Federal Reserve this year? Because the number that really set set the um, set the cat amongst the pigeons. About say about five weeks ago, four and a half weeks ago, was it was the uh, impressive jump in average earnings in the United States. Now earnings are are, are still say, above average, but they're they're now growing at a, at a slower pace and also they did, they did miss expectations. So traders are now kind of questioning: Are there going to be four rate hikes uh, in 2018, or perhaps it was the original three that we kind of penciled in? That's what we could be looking at. Uh, so there's sort of sort of the the, the main events to be looking at. Uh, what I'll talk about now is the main events of the week ahead of us. Uh, for those of you who have, have an account with us and are you go on our platform, under the news and analysis section is where you can find the majority, but not all, of the updates that we do. So going under news analysis uh, to this section here, and then scrolling across to Friday's one because it would, would be put up on Friday, uh, Friday afternoon, the week ahead. This gets done on a weekly basis. There's actually an embedded uh, video that, that goes along with it, which is done as well. But I'll just run through here uh, the highlights of uh, the both the uh, economic and corporate events of the week ahead of us. So on tomorrow, uh, we have fourth quarter figures out from Dick Springs, uh, Dick, Dick's Big Big Sporting Goods 
uh, in the United States. Uh, sporting is coming off tomorrow um, on, on Tuesday, fourth quarter of numbers. On Wednesday, we have industrial production and retail sales figures coming out of China. Keep in mind, uh, we, we had some fairly impressive Chinese exports recently. Uh, and if ch and this is possibly a, an argument behind Donald Trump's trade war, whereby the, the playing field or the trading agreements aren't level between the United States and China. And we have a scenario whereby Chinese imports last month were, weren't very high, but Chinese exports were enormous. So Mr. someone like Mr. Trump is looking at this and saying, you know what, we've got to alter this, we've got to change the arrangement, we've got to change the relationship here, because China is benefiting and selling a lot out to the West, in particular to the US, but it isn't necessarily buying much from the US, as much from the US. So you can see why Mr. Trump would like to actually uh, a, a change the, the trading relationship between the two countries. So keep an eye on the Chinese figures that are coming out on Wednesday. If you trade, say, the Australian dollar or any of the mining companies or high-grade copper, you need to keep an eye out what's going on in China. On Wednesday, we've also retail sales coming out of America. That will also be a good one to watch, a good barometer of how potentially hawkish or dovish the Federal Reserve are going, are going to be because Americans go out and earn more money. As you saw, wage increases are on the rise in the United States, but are they going to actually spending it? And that's going to be the real driving factor of whether uh, the, the Federal Reserve actually looked to get of Once again, last year we had three rate hikes. Are we going to get three more this year or are we going to get four rate hikes? That's something, something that traders will be keeping an eye out for. On Wednesday, we have full-year figures coming out from Morrison Supermarket and on Wednesday we also have full year numbers coming off from Balfour Beatty and Balfour Beatty is one of those construction and outsourcing companies and all, and one of those service providers. It does a lot of um, go, uh, government contracts and Balfour Beatty is what, what Caroline could have been if it actually took it the tough medicine and went down the route. Uh, Balfour Beatty, like Carillion a few years ago, overstretched themselves um, Spread themselves too thin, took on too many contracts that didn't have a high enough profit, prof, high enough profit margin just to, to get the contract, but you put in a competitive bid to get it, and then went through a series of profit warnings, and then after that, uh, eventually, things were looking quite were, were looking quite bad for for Balfour Beatty a number of years ago, but actually, did some there was some quite extensive restructuring and, and are now being have now been bounced back. Uh, on the topic as well, we have your figures coming off of Interserve, another company. In a similar sector, uh, a company that does a lot of um, government contracts, you've got outsourcing work and, and, and various different service contracts. Uh, they've been in the news recently for, for uh, well, over the last few months for the wrong reasons. They've had a couple of, had a couple of profit have had a few profit warnings. Uh, we did see the share price bounce back last week, at the back end of last week though, on the on the news that a company called Emerald Investment, a Scottish crowd, are looking at acquiring a lot of their debt on the secondary market. And, and, and there was a report in one of the papers Stating that uh, that uh, Emerald Investment are actually looking to kind of to kind of you know to get a kind of guarantee or potentially back the financing of interest reserves. So keep an eye out for the interest reserve figures which are coming out uh, on Friday. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to run through uh, the, the major the major markets, most popular markets, and talk about the price action I'm seeing on, on the screen and areas that we, we could potentially see some um, we could see the market potentially potentially move to. Um, if there are any markets, I'm going to cover eight major indices, major commodities, major currency pairs. If there are any markets that, that I haven't covered that you want me to cover, feel free to type in the chat box where you, where you, where you in the same area you got back to me saying that, that you know, yes, you could hear, the, uh, hear me loud and clear. Feel free to type in uh, suggestions of markets that you want me to cover. So I'm starting off now with the FTSE 100. And so I can see here on the FTSE 100, um, in the last few sessions, after the mega sell-off that we saw in uh, late January, early February, the market was was, was bouncing back. The uh, it, it appeared that the uh, the bounce back, the um, the push higher, ran out of a bit of steam, and now we're pushing higher again. So not only are we pushing higher, we're also seeing a steady increase in the late in positive momentum. This is the uh, the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram. It measures momentum. So while the market's pushing higher, it's been confirmed by the increase in positive. Momentum, so we can see that momentum is with the buyers, with the bulls. So the market's pushing higher. If we continue to push higher, we could be looking at testing this region here, the late January, the late February high of 7,340. And if we go north of that, we could be looking at retesting the 7,400 level. But if we do manage to manage to turn over on itself again, we could be looking at finding support in around the 7,061. And a break below of 7,061. 
could pave the way for a fallback and a retesting of the um, of, of this price here from from the out of hours low on on on, on, on Thursday the 8th of February, which comes into play at 6,919. I take a look now at what's going on over in Germany. It's, it's uh, for the European markets. The, the shape of the chart looks relatively similar, and same with the uh, same with that in America, where similar deal in Germany will buy. We've had the sell off, we've had a bounce back. It's given up a lot. It gave up a lot of its ground gains here, and things were looking fairly negative for the DAX, but it has managed to kind of bounce back again. We really would need to see the twelve thousand six hundred area, the uh, the late uh, February high, being cleared before we before we become more confident that this. Uh, Full correction is underway because we've had a full correction, say on, on the Nasdaq 100, for example. But yet, the European markets are very much uh, falling, still languishing behind. So if you do take out 12,600, we could see a target 12,741, and if we go north of there, we could be looking at heading up towards the 13,000 level. If the market does manage to kind of that runs out of steam and turns over on itself again. We may find some support in around the kind of 12,000 area, or perhaps even down uh, at the at the 2018 lows, or the, the February lows of 11,692. It this uh, this level here. So taking a look now, at what's going on with the Dow Jones? As you can see here. Bit, bit of a healthier looking chart here in that the market's had a fairly decent recovery. It's it's, it's pulled back and, a bit, and it's pushing higher here yet again. It's now once again back above the 50 day moving average. The market's edging higher. We can see that momentum has turned positive the last couple of sessions and it's increasing. So the so the momentum is with the buyers. First, I would keep an eye out for the upside will be the late February high at 25,821. If we go north of that, the kind of psychological, psychological number of 26,000 will be the next one to watch out for. And a decisive break north of 26,000 could look at then uh, sending us back up towards this area here, the the, the, uh, the early February high of 26,307. If the market does manage to kind of run out of steam and put and drift lower again, we may find some support in around the 25,000 area, or perhaps even down at the the uh, early March low of 24,213. But I think this area here it could, could be an area whereby if, if, if this is taken out to the downside, it could be a sign that, that the market is once again losing confidence, or it could be like heading back down towards the uh, February low of 23,138. I'll just kick, take a look now at what's going on, going on with the S&P 500. As you can see, the, 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 the price action of both that the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 have been fairly similar, just like the price action of plus 200 and the Nasdaq. I'm sorry, plus 200 and the DAX have been similar as well. So, but the, the, the key difference on the S&P 500, which it has over the DAX, is that the S&P 500 has actually managed to take out the um, the recent uh, February highs, and we're actually we're talking at levels now not seen since early February on the on the uh, S&P 500. And the markets can be one of those kind of self-fulfilling prophecies whereby the more a market recovers, the more likely it is to make to make a, a full recovery. So we've uh, we the market pushed higher here, got up got up towards the 2,800 mark as the market was pushing higher here the last few sessions, a steady and notable increase in positive momentum. So the the momentum confirms the upward move. That the momentum is with the bulls. The market's pushing higher here. And if you do manage to take out 2,800 again, we could be looking heading heading up to then towards 2,838. And then if we go beyond that, we could be looking at retesting the all-time highs of 2,877. Any pullbacks that we do that we, that, we, that we could see may find some support from the 50-day moving average at 27,047, or perhaps even down at this level here at um 20 uh, 2,000. Seven, sorry, 2,720 or even 2,700 itself. It's only if we see a break south of this area here at 2,647, then could you be worried and looking, looking heading potentially back down towards 2,600 or maybe even as low as 2,532. But given that the market has recovered, uh, if, you, if you look at the amount of recovery from the highs here to the lows here, we can clearly see that we covered some in the region around 70. 75% of the of the of the downward move from the all-time highs. So 
the, the more a market has recovered, the more likely it is to make a full recovery. I'll just show you now what's going on with the NASDAQ 100 and how that actually managed to actually not only make a full recovery, but actually going to print fresh record highs. So, as you can see here, this potentially could be the blueprint for other markets whereby the market pushes higher, makes a recovery, has, a, has, has the odd pullback but, but goes on to actually create hit, uh, goes on to uh, retest uh, the, the recent all-time highs and, and hit fresh new highs from there. So the last few sessions throughout March, we can see a clear and steady increase in the, in the price here. And also it's been confirmed by the increase in positive momentum. The market's pushing higher here. Uh, we're currently trading at 71.25 or so on the NASDAQ 100. So if the market will continue to push on from here, we could be looking at targeting 7,200. Any kind of moves to the downside, we could find some support coming into play in around the 7,000 7, number itself. And it's only if you have a, say, a, a size, if only, it's only if you say, if you have, say, move south to say 6,800, then you might want to get worried and we could be looking heading back down towards 6,643. As I mentioned, uh, I'm going to go through some commodities now and then some currencies. If there are any markets that you want me to cover, feel free to type in the chat box and I will be happily give those a look. So if you take a look at the price action of the last, try, basically throughout, say, 20, say, January onwards, we can see that the price of gold um, has been broadly edging lower. We've seen some kind of wide swings, and broadly speaking, we have seen the market move lower, you know, and... The definition of a, of a downward trend is lower lows and lower highs, and that's precisely what we saw here uh, in gold in the last few weeks. So, after hitting 2018 high and a high for not, a level not seen for over a year, what does gold do? Pushes pushes lower here, put, bounces back, creates a lower high because this high did not take off. This high pushes lower again, takes off the recent low. So that's, that's a new lower low created. Market bounce market has bounced back, and lo and behold. This high here hasn't taken off the recent high here, and it's certainly got nowhere near this high. So this could be another lower high potentially, and so we could be looking at retesting the recent lows of three, of thirteen oh two. And if you go south of that, you know we're we're basically on thirteen hundred. And if you go south of thirteen hundred, we could be looking heading back down towards the thirty moving average at twelve eighty nine. Moves to the upside may run, the first may run into resistance at the fifty moving average at thirteen thirty. But uh, it's only if we see a move north of the the most recent high at 1340. Uh, it's only if we see a break north of 1340, because then we actually get start to start to um, feel we could actually be looking at retesting, say 1350 or 1366, heading up toward these areas here. While the market uh, is south of say 1340, it's, it's likely it's, it's likely that that market is going to continue to push lower. It's like, like I say, because you know we 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 haven't created any any higher highs in a while for gold. So if you don't we don't take out thirteen forty, it's likely the market is going to drift lower. Um, but if you do manage to take out say thirteen forty, we could be looking heading towards thirteen fifty, or then of course the uh, February high of thirteen sixty one will come into play, and then beyond that it'll be the January high of thirteen sixty six. And if you take out thirteen sixty six, the next level to keep an eye out for will be thirteen seventy five, on a, a level not seen since July of 2016. US Cocoa, yeah, I'll have a look at that now in a second. Let's go to the oil markets very quickly. Cocoa. So the big picture on Brent oil, and it's similar enough to WTI, is that for say about, about seven months, the market's been in a solid upward trend here. We saw it go on to hit multi-year highs in January of this year, the market has since then come off a bit. Uh, we, we have seen we've seen the move lower here. Uh, in my opinion, we, we could be at a potentially a bit of a turning point, possibly uh, for, for the energy market. The market had a fairly decent correct, had a sizable correction, but after you know a long period of say after a period of, of a seven month rally, and the market has pushed higher here, and now we've, we've dipped lower here, and we seem to be in a bit of a consolidation range here. Now, I, now I'm wondering. Is this, a, is this just a decent correction of a seven month rally? And what we're, what we're going to see is a higher high, a higher low, and then potentially re, a move higher again, retesting the 71 region and going on higher from there. Or is this the beginning of a, of a downward trend? Is this beginning of, is this potentially the first lower low 
is this the lower high and, and, and could we be looking at another lower low so I think with the energy market given that it's valued for seven se seven months uh, so a decent run for seven months or even multi-year high it's probably more likely that the market is taking a bit of a breather here and we could be looking at retesting the, the late February high of 67.93 and then potentially head, headed towards 70 or 71 after that but bearing in mind, if you do take out this low here, I think a lot of traders will be keeping an eye on this price here, here of the in the 62 region, the mid, the, the the low the low of February that was created in the middle of the month. If you take out that level, that will be then the creation of, of a second lower low, and that could be a signal that we're actually in for a, a bit of a, a a bit more of a of a decline in the energy market. And if you go south to 72, we could be looking at taking it back towards 61. 24 or perhaps even down as low as $60 a barrel itself, but obviously moves to the upside We could be looking heading up towards $70 um, and The recent high was 71.38 and, and move north of that We could find resistance at 72.74 It's a fairly similar looking chart on WTI, but I'll have a look at that now Yeah, I'll be coming on to euro sterling that that's one of the one of the, uh, one of the popular uh, currency pairs, Mr. Mr. Conroy. So I'll be, I'll be, I'll be looking at, at that when I do my uh, do my piece on commod on currency pairs. So as you can see with WTI, it's a fairly similar looking chart. The big picture of the last seven or eight months has been a classic example of an upward trend, higher highs and higher lows. Once again, if we can hold north of this area here of the the February low of 58.10, if we can hold north of this area here. We, it's likely that we could see a retesting of the recent, the recent late February high of 64.30 and then beyond that head up towards 64, sorry, 66, 67, so on and so forth. But if you do manage to take out the uh, the February low of 58.10, that could be, that, that will that, that will then be a second lower low in the, in, the, uh, in in a few months and that could be an indication that we're heading back down towards this potentially this area here at 58.55.72. Or down even as low as 54.76. But once again, moves to the upside. Uh, given that it's such a wider, a positive trend, it's more likely that we're going to continue that positive trend than a, than a complete turnover. But like I said, keep an eye out for the February low. I'll take a look uh, at that commodity now. Just to clarify, Mr. Smith, in relation to which precise contract is it? Because you mentioned in, in, the, in the message US, but what I'm seeing here on the screen is UK cash. Sure, no worries. Yep, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I figured because it's all done in alphabetical order, so I figured it was that one, yep. Yeah. Now, to be honest with you, this is, is in a market I don't really have, a, 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 I don't spend much time looking at, to be perfectly honest, but I certainly will give you my, my uh, opinion in a minute. Okay, obviously this is a, this kind of this is, is a market that I look at fairly regularly, so let's do a bit of a, a longer data analysis than I normally do. Uh, as you can see here, after massive surge here, what a successive run of several years from say 2011. This is a massive bull run here, higher highs, higher lows all the way along. Multi-year high created here in 2016, quite an aggressive sell-off on, on the back of that. These in these sort of scenarios, you're always kind of wondering. Is this, a, is this a snapback or is the market going to turn over on itself again and turn lower because or is this a point where the market is actually going to be pushing higher and we're looking looking at actually recovering the ground that we've lost but I will say as this is that it's, it's 
what adds weight to the argument that the market is turning around is the fact that it's actually quite distinctively smashed above these highs here. You see the market here take off this high here, this high here, this high here even. All signs, all, all, um, they all that, that all kind of adds weight to the argument that the market, um, the market is is correcting itself and, and the market is pushing higher and this, this upward move could be sustained. It's also what also um, is encouraging to see as well is how as the market was pushing higher here, there's a steady increase in positive momentum. So the momentum is clearly with the buyers. It's when you see a market pushing higher and momentum isn't pushing higher, momentum is going the opposite direction. That's when you can get a bit work. That's when you get, can get a bit nervous. Part of me that part of me thinks that the market has made a fairly has gained so much ground here as such a violent or uh, um, aggressive snapback. We might see the market pull back to say somewhere in around here. Potentially with these highs come into play in around the 16.52 area. We could see the market just give just just give up some of these gains or, or potentially down towards 1600 before potentially moving higher. Just because a move like this is so aggressive and it's, it's it was done in such a short space of time, it's often difficult for markets to, to sustain that momentum, even if it does have a, you know, even if the, the wider positive move does continue, it's often difficult for this to go, go up in a, to go up in a, a 60 degree line. That's quite difficult for, for markets to do. So it may, you, you may see a bit of a pullback, potentially down as low as say 1600 or maybe even down towards the 50 week moving average here at 1531. Notice how it acted as, as, a, as, as a support here only a few weeks ago. And then if you do continue to push higher from here, I think a key area to keep an eye on will be this price, this this block here. Probably the, the top end of that range would be 18, 1887. Uh, just because there's a lot of consolidation in around here. And of course, what, what we're seeing now is the market appears to be running into resistance uh, in, in, uh, in around there. So if we do take out 18, this this area here, we could be looking heading towards 1900, and then of course uh, 2000 will, will, be, will be a big area to keep an eye out for. Uh, I hope that answers your questions, Mr. Smith. So yeah, the, what, I think, what we could see is a bit of a snapback before another push higher again. But to be even extra, if you if you want if you want to kind of if you wanted to get real confirmation that that the, that the that this downward that this downward trend is coming to an end and the market is potentially going to do a full correction. A move north of say 2000 would, would then kind of signify that. Right. I will now do a couple of do a few, few currency pairs. Oh, yep, yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, there we go. It's yeah, it's, it's always good to just have, you know, obviously form your own views first and foremost, but it's always good to get some else's view because they may, they may clock something that you haven't seen or haven't, haven't thought of, but uh. We're clear. We're clearly on the same page then. Right now, I'll have a, do a quick rundown of a few currency pairs, the big ones. Starting off with euro dollar. Um. So there's been, there's been such a wider upward move in the in the in the euro versus the, the US dollar. That was just kind of suggest to me that the wider positive move is going to continue. But at the same time, I'm fully aware that we've seen a few incidents of kind of. The market has been edging a bit lower here. Granted, we did put a new higher high here. The market created a higher low, sorry, a, a, a lower low, and now we're kind of we're kind of drifting in on this area. It seems to me the market seems to be a bit indecisive. But while we remain north of the of say the 122 area or the, of this low here at 121.54, I suspect the wider upward move is going to continue, and then obviously. If you take off this, the immediate level to keep an eye for the upside will be 124.46, the recent high. If you go north of that, we could be looking heading up towards 125, and then potentially up towards the recent high of 125.55. But and a move and a move south of this 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 area here could bring us back to, bring us back down towards the 120.92, or even down to the psychologically important 120 level itself. Taking a look now at the pound versus the US, US dollar. And I'll be coming on to Euro Sterling after this chart. <clears throat> Once again, a lot of uh, after quite a decent run for 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 many many months, um, we've seen a bit of consolidation in around here. But the big picture is if you draw a low a trend line between the lows of March last year and the lows of August. Granted, I'm afraid we, we, we traded below on a few occasions. It's still very much north of that upward that upward trend line. So while we remain no, north of this trend line here, the outlook for for pound sterling uh, is, is likely to remain positive. 
Granted, we are seeing we are seeing a bit of a downward trend, obviously coming into effect here. Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. But the wider picture of it being north of this trend line uh, is still positive. So as, given that we're seeing quite small ranges, this meant that, that the market is a bit kind of indecisive. But I expect the, the wider upper trend could continue while we remain north of this trend line. So if we do manage to push on higher from here to get us back in, to kind of snap out of this kind of shorter term or mid near term uh, downward trend, we need to take out, say, the 140 area. If we go north of 140, we would be looking towards the, the, the mid-February high of 140, 150. Move to the downside. Keep an, keep an eye out for uh, the the March low of 130.12. And if you go south of that, we may find we may find some support in around where the, where the trend line comes into play, which would be somewhere in the region of, of, of around about 136.10 or 136, the figure itself. But if, and it's only if you break that trend line, because then we get a bit more worried that, you, and we, we could be looking at heading back down towards the 134, uh, 135, 134 region. Take a look now at Euro Sterling. Euro Sterling uh, continue, continues to be an I. Uh, a market which which hasn't had a major amount of volatility uh, for, for quite a while it was sort of range bound between say zero spot eighty nine two nine to the top and zero spot eighty six eighty nine to the bottom end and only re only last week when I actually had a break north of it I thought fund we're actually seeing some direction in, the, in this currency pair and what do you know the market actually managed to get back below that uh, that level again uh, it does appear to be you could, there's, a, there's an argument to be made since the end of January, or say the past about eight, six, six to eight weeks, the market is in an upward trend. You could, you could say that the market is creating higher highs and higher lows. If you do manage to continue to push on higher from here, the, the first area to keep an eye out to the upside will, of course, be the recent high of 0 spot 89.67. And if you go north of that, we'd be looking towards uh, 0 spot 90. And then potentially north of that, we could be looking at heading the this price area here of 0 spot 90.49. Move to the downside, may find some support in around zero spot 88 area. And if you take out the uh, the end of the late February low of uh, of zero spot 87.71, we could be looking heading down to the, to the bottom end of the range at zero spot 86.89. And if you go south of there, which we haven't done in a while, because this 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 will be potentially be a significant area because it was tested on a couple of occasions. If you go south of the zero spot 86.89. We could be looking heading back down towards 86 the figure. Now the last market I'm going to have a look at is going to be the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. And then uh, I'll show you a few things on our trading platform and then uh, we'll look to wrap things up. So as you can see here from broadly speaking from November onwards uh, the dollar the yen has been in a fairly uh, obvious downward trend. So you know this this was the, uh, the the original lower low. Market pushed higher here, created a lower high, traded in a small range for a few weeks, and then of course we've seen the lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. Classic example of, of of a downward trend. We are seeing the market in the near term uh, market pushing up higher again. Um, we have seen the market grind up higher here. And, and that's been confirmed by the positive increase in positive momentum, which could just mean the market is just going to we are seeing some farther hunting or, or seeing some short short, uh, short covering come into play. Are the market edging up higher? The wider picture is still to the downside, but if the market in the near term is edging higher, you, you really while we could even retest uh, 108. And while we, but while we, we remain south of 108, I think that the wider downward trend is going is, could could remain in place. So we could head up towards 108 before potentially turning over on itself and heading down towards 107, 106, and then testing the recent lows here of uh, of 105.25. And then if we go south of that, we're obviously within a fairly close distance of 105, the figure itself. If you move north of 108, now to keep an eye for potentially to the upside will be 109.78. And if you go up north of that, we could be looking at up, up towards 110.84. I've just been asked a question here.
uh, just I was uh, illustrating a, a question here um, by one of by Joshua. In relation to um, your, uh, Joshua, your observation that there's a kind of inverse relationship between say, the, the FTSE 100 or the UK 100 and, and the and the and, and cable, but since uh, but since February it's been mirroring the Dow Jones, the US 30. Uh, I suspect that because the major because the the global stock market sell-off that happened in say in, in February was led by the Americans began in the United States. As I mentioned at the top of this podcast, at the top of this webinar, about how the strong wage growth data in the United States in two non-farm payrolls ago got traders got traders concerned. We could see four rate hikes in 2018 rather than three, which they were kind of penciling in. So I suspect because the sell-off originated in in America, traders were then waiting for America to turn around or else effectively continued continue to lead the way. America began the sell-off. The world and the rest of the world followed. Uh, America is, is correcting itself, and now the, the rest of the world is following again. That's my take on my, that's my take on that's my take on the events of why why um say for example, you know the the, the, the moves and the, the 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 moves. Notice how the charts on the, of the the Dow Jones, the S and P five hundred, and the Nasdaq were all looked fairly similar. And then over in Europe, the the, the movements on the FTSE one hundred and also on the and and the German market, the, the DAX, they looked fairly similar as well. So. I just think that this is, is, is an example of it began in the United States because it's a kind of American-led sell-off, and, and now and now the market is moving is moving um is moving lower also. But it, but uh, sorry, the market's moving hot. The markets are the correction. The sell-off started in America. The correction started in America, and everyone else is following. Also, as I mentioned recently, uh, two couple of charts ago, the the, the pound-dollar trend over the past say five or six weeks has been to the downside. Granted, that's in a that's in a wider positive trend, but still, the, the the pound has been losing ground to the U.S. dollar recently. And also on top of that, as you've seen on the euro, euro starting chart a couple of charts ago, the the euro, well, at least briefly anyways, was, was gaining ground against the pound too. Uh, so in terms of actually covering charts, that's that's actually it for the webinar itself. What I do want to do is quickly run through a couple of things on our trading platform. As I mentioned at the top of the platform, everything that we do in terms of news analysis gets po- a lot of the stuff that we, that we do in terms of um, analysis gets posted here to the news and analysis section. So throughout the day, feel free to go on this and, and, and get our uh, our thoughts and our views and, uh, and and the news stories that we feel are important. Also, that there are other webinars that, that you can avail of. So tonight at uh, 1900 GMT, 7 p.m. UK time. There's the Trader Development Program Part 2, Trade trade with a Precision Strategy. That's on tonight. Uh, I, I recommend tuning into that. On Wednesday, the 14th of March at 17.30 GMT, past 7 p.m. UK time, we have the Next Generation Forex webinar. Uh, for those of you uh, in Northern England, uh, we, have a, we have a seminar in Manchester. Uh, so I said in a seminar in Manchester, in the, in the Hilton in Deansgate, Manchester, on Thursday, the 15th of March. Uh, the, the time for that is 1800 GMT, six, half 6 30, half 6 p.m. UK time. And of course, next Monday, 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 the 19th of March, it'll be me once again in the hot seat for the Monday Market Update webinar. All the things on our, on our platform that are worth having a look at are as, are as follows. Um, market Insights get, gets, gets updated with, the various, with, the very, with some of our updates throughout the day, and they, and they can be found under Market Pulse. Um, there's the second option down. So, advertisements for the for the webinar or, or any kind of uh, any sort of videos that we do throughout the session um, will we'll get will get posted there along with very different data alerts. Notice how um, the, the, the the charts that I was using I I, I had very different lines written uh, and trend lines and support resistance lines and what have you drawn on the, on those charts. Um, throughout the day, throughout the day several several times a day we'll be updating the chart forum, which is essentially. Which is essentially we, we take a screenshot of a chart and we put in a, a few hundred words uh, and uh, of, of what's the, the description of the price action and what's going on with the price action and in terms of um, potential levels to keep an eye out for. And chart forum uh, can be found on market under market polls yet again and is the third option down. 
Uh, and as to your question, uh, you do not have to have attended part one to attend part two. So feel free to sign up to part two. Uh, in future, we got some of these webinars, particularly the evening ones, are held over, over a successive period of time. Um, so ideally, just keep an eye out on the web website itself and you, and you will find out more details about when, when, when they can be found. Uh, but the answer is uh, feel free to join part two, even though you may not have actually joined uh, part one. It's absolutely fine to do that. Uh, I do want to thank you for your time. All of us at CMC Markets appreciate you tuning in to our webinars. Uh, the video of this webinar is going to be available on Market Insights within the next hour or so. Uh, well, I think we have covered all the major bases and all the major markets. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in. Have a good trading week and good luck.